Hey guys, Wags with Ironman 4x4. I'm gonna show you how to get our brand new Forerunner stubby bumpers put on your truck. All right, pop your hood. You wanna take this top plastic panel off that shrouds over the top of your radiator. So grab a body clip removal tool. These little clips, you just push them down and they pop right out. Get all those out and set it aside. It's always good practice when you're working on a rig to unhook your negative battery terminal. You've got all kinds of electronics on here. So better safe than sorry. Plus we're gonna be hooking up a winch. So we'll have to do this anyways. I find it's really important to lay all your hardware out so you know you received everything. A lot of times, you know, something might get missed or fall out of a, a bag and you need to make sure you have it before you even dig in or you're just gonna get frustrated. So we've got our bumper shell, flip up license plate, adapter bracket, which you can use with or without a winch, depending on what you're doing. You got your light bar. We've got our winch tray, trim lock, We've got a solenoid adapter plate, so depending on what kind of winch you have, we thought we'd include this great adapter plate to make it a little bit easier uh, to adapt things on there. We've got all of uh, the nuts, bolts, washers, shims, uh, recovery points, zip ties. It's really important, lay it all out, make sure you have everything first, take a nice inventory. Then when you're working on it, it just makes a lot more sense when you're going, well, I have three of these bolts. Oh, well, I guess they go on my winch tray because that's where they go. So I've got kind of a makeshift workbench going here. Uh, important thing is I've got a nice thick piece of cardboard down so I'm not gonna scratch anything up because I don't wanna ding it up before I get it on the truck. We'll let the trail do that for us. Um, this isn't a winch install video, so make sure you click on our winch install video if you wanna see how to get your winch set up. But we are going to put a winch in our winch bumper because that's kind of what it's for. So this is already uh, kind of staged and prepped. I pre-baked it for you. Uh, another piece that we include is this universal uh, control box or solenoid box adapter plate. This was built to bolt back here. We make several sizes of controller boxes. This helps you mount the smaller one. Or if you're not using one of our monster winches, this thing's universal. You can use the holes we provided or you can drill what you need to make it work. Um, you can even mount your control box somewhere under the hood in the engine bay. Uh, you just want to kind of try to keep it away from heat and any moving parts. So I'm gonna get the winch set here. I'm gonna get red Loctite on my winch bolts. We'll get the winch mounted up and then we can keep charging forward. All right, winch is on the winch tray. Uh, next, grab yourself something to brace this winch tray with. I grabbed some wood blocks, rolled it forward up on its nose and now we can grab our right and left recovery point. Look at how beefy those things are, man. We're gonna grab four of our big bolts with split washers and fender washers, two for each side. These fit in just like this. And we will just get those finger tight in there for now. And I will do the other side. Okay, we got the recovery points finger tight. Now we can move this off the bench and we can get our shell on because we got to get the light bar in that and get some other stuff prepped. Then we will combine them. All right, we got the shell up on the bench. We're going to put the fair lead for our winch on, which is fairly simple. This hardware is going to come with your winch, but it's an important part not to forget if you are putting your winch on. The other thing you want to do too is make sure you've got your license plate flip up bracket. That's going to go on first. Then you're going to sandwich on that beautiful Iron Man 4x4 Fairlead. We'll pop our bolts in. There you go. And now what we can do is I'm going to rock it back towards me upright and we'll go flat washer, split washer nut. Spin that bad boy down. All right, you're gonna need a big fat number eight Allen for the front and a 19 for the back. Doesn't have to be super, super crazy tight. Just flatten out that split washer and you're good. All right, let's get this light bar installed. So we need our light bar. We've got our brackets and our hardware laid out. Another little detail here on the light bar. 
you may say, well, which side is up and which side is down? But if you go right there, there's a teeny little Iron Man logo. So that's how you know which way is up. Grab yourself a number five Allen and we'll just snug that down a little bit because we still want to leave it loose so we can get our fitment set perfect. We'll grab our hardware. We got a bolt and a nylock nut. Bolt goes down to the top of the bracket. You've got those little raised shoulders to hold the head of the bolt in place. And then we'll spin this nylock nut on. Same thing on the other side. All right, that's a number 13 socket. Get that thing tightened down. Use a deep dish because the bolt's long. All right, that is barely snug. Leave these 13s a little loose because what I found is you want to turn your light bar, get it pushed as far down as you can, just like that. Once it's nice and flush, lock the nuts down. And the reason why I said leave the Allen's on the bracket on the sides of the lights loose is because when we get it on the truck, there's some adjustment there so that we can make sure we're shining it exactly where we need it to go. All right, that pretty much does it for the shell. The light bar is on. We've tightened up the light bar enough so that we can adjust it out in the field. You can always, once you get it set, you can always get through the openings and tighten it up and lock it down. But um, with the split washers on there, the light bars don't walk too much. So we're good there. Bumper shell's done. Let's get the winch tray back up on the bench and we will combine the two. All right, we've got our winch tray with our bumper mounted in it. Recovery points are loosely fitted. We've got our front bumper shell. Light went in easy, fair leads easy. So on your winch, uh, go ahead and slack out some extra line. Push that through. And then what we can do now is we've just got to do three bolts on this side, three bolts on this side. It's an 18 mil. If you have a ratcheting wrench, like a gear wrench, that works the best. Let's do it. Grab the bolt. All right, very good. We got that one in the middle on that side. We'll do the same on the other. So I've found that even though these mounting holes are adjustable for the front shell, I push mine all the way to the back. The main reason why it's so important to get your bumper shell bolted onto your winch tray now is because because it's a stubby bumper, you have such a tight space to work with. You've got to be able to get these three and three bolts on and have access to do it. If you wait and try to do it on the truck, it's nearly impossible. You need a real nice expensive swivel head, ratcheting 18 to get up in there. You hardly have any throw. It's really tight. I've done it both ways. This is the way to do it. It's so much easier. Get everything built out, grab a buddy, then you guys can hang it on the truck. Get a couple bolts set. It's, <laughs> it, it, it is a huge hassle to do it the other way. So this is the best way to do it. All right, the bumper's pretty much assembled. Now let's talk about the cut on the front of your Forerunner. Okay, here's the deal. You guys are super high speed. I get that. Our videos go long, so we thought let's trim out a bunch of the fat. Starting with, we already cut the front of this bumper. Don't get nervous because the cut is so simple. It's the easiest cut out of all the Toyotas we've done so far because Toyota kind of already tells you what the template needs to be. So what you want to do is get your front bumper skin removed off the truck, pull your crash bar off. You can cut it back on the truck or off the truck, but you've already got this great guideline right here with the lines of the truck. So the cut on the side is gonna start at the top of that ridge and you're gonna go a half inch inboard and that is where you're gonna make your cut. Now you can see here at the very base, the valley right there, I actually taped it off and I painted this in just to make it look nice, but you've got a half inch. If you go from the valley over, you're looking at, well, let me line it up here for you. You're looking at probably an eighth an eighth to three sixteenths. So pretty straightforward, make your cut. And you can see here, as you get to the top of the cut, see where that comes around right here, that high point, the bumper naturally makes this turn here. So cut back up in here. 
I wanted to leave as much meat behind that bumper as possible, but still allow the bumper to fit because it's kind of nice to have that skirting behind it. If you cut around really high, it doesn't matter. You're not going to do anything, but I didn't want to be able to look from different angles and see behind, you know, I didn't want to see daylight behind the bumper. So that's why I tried to leave as much meat as I could. So you can follow my lead here and make this similar cut if you want. You don't have to, you can literally continue this radius right across. And then for the top cut, again, super, super simple. Grab your tape measure, go to the center of the bottom of your grill, push the tooth of the tape up against it, pull it down, and you are looking at an inch and three quarters straight across. You don't need a template for this. Grab some painter's tape, tape it out, draw your lines, make sure you got what you want, then go slow. Cutting bumpers is just like a haircut. Go slow, take a little bit off at a time. You can always take more if you need to, but you can't go back the other way. Make sense? Awesome. You've also got these internal plastic pieces. You don't need to lose these like air dam baffle things. For this cut here, find the back of this plastic grill piece and come straight down. This plastic shroud has a little bit different uh, geometry to it. So you wanna cut from this top point here where you made your cut, come back in here, cut that right around. And again, it's from the back of the grill, come straight down, you'll have plenty of room. Now we're doing this up on the alignment rack in the shop, but don't let that intimidate you. I do tons of stuff at home in my garage. This is one of the easiest bumpers to install on any of our trucks. So once your crash bar's off and you've got your cut made, you're gonna reuse your stock hardware on this face mount of your frame. So you've got three bolts outside, one bolt inside. Same thing over here. I've just got these mocked up to show you. We're gonna pull these things out I'm gonna grab a buddy and we're gonna fit our entire bumper up onto this. Once we fit it up on, all we really need to do is on the outside, we just need to get one bolt in there, left and right, and then it'll hang. Then uh, the hard part's done. Then we can just start fitting hardware. So now that we've made our cut and we've removed all this material, you've also lost some structural support to your front plastics. So we've got a great bracket for you it's gonna bolt in right here. It's a little tricky if you don't understand kind of how it's oriented, so let me grab it, I'll show you. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the passenger side. This bracket here can be a little confusing because you think it's, it's the same front and back, but it's not, it's not mirrored. You wanna install this side down just like that. This is the side that's more, you know, squared off and then has a radius. This top angles up and over. So again, you've got a bit of a ramp here, slope. That fits just like that. If it looks like this and it's flat on the top, you've done it wrong. We've got our hardware right here. You wanna grab this black bolt, two fender washers, and a serrated nut, serrated flange nut. We'll bolt it all together. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so the bracket goes in here. We're gonna take bolt and fender washer, and that's gonna go right up inside there like that. We'll go fender washer and then serrated nut wash, uh, serrated nut. You can see it's got those serrations on there. It'll bite down. Grab yourself a number four Allen. We'll stick that in the head of the bolt and then it's a number 10. I leave mine a little loose just so we've got some adjustment. We can always tighten it down once the bumper's hung. Let's do the driver's side. This is your driver's side bracket. It looks very different from the passenger one but this is how this bracket is gonna set up in here. You're gonna lay this long flange back there, and that's just gonna kinda of tuck back there. You can drill a hole and fasten that in if you're worried about your plastics, but what's really important is you wanna take this hardware and you wanna bolt it in right here. That is gonna stabilize the whole bottom side of the plastic so it won't flap around on you. Same setup as the other side. Run that up through there. Get a fender washer over the top and that serrated nut. Grab a number four Allen and a 10 millimeter wrench and we'll get it snug, but not, not locked down because we're gonna need a little bit of adjustment. And we're gonna go up over this plastic. Come down just a hair, bud. There you go, but up, up over that cut. <sighs>
We got the bumper hanging and have a couple bolts hand threaded in just to keep it in place. Now we're gonna get this inner bolt on the frame horn. We'll grab a 14 and we'll use our OEM bolt with the provided washer. I grabbed a long extension, that's the easiest way to do it. And we'll do the same thing on the driver's side. We've got the inner core support bolts in. Now we've got the three more on the outside of the frame horns we need to do. Grab these plates right here. We're gonna use these as our washer for our OEM hardware. You're gonna slide that plate right up there. And then we're gonna hand thread these three bolts back in. Grab yourself a long extension, a 14 millimeter socket, and a ratchet. You wanna do these by hand because when you're putting old OEM hardware back in, I've just, at least it's my luck, I always wind up cross-threading something or getting it way too hot. So if you do it by hand, you can go slow and you can kind of feel, if you start to run into a burr or something, you can stop, back out, throw a little WD-40 on the bolt, start again. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Grab your washer plate and those three bolts for the frame horn. Now we're gonna finish up the rest of our hardware for our recovery point. Grab yourself a deep dish 17, and we're gonna loosen, not take off, but just loosen about halfway down this body mount nut. There we go. Once that's down, you can actually push the bolt up and out of the way, and then you can access your holes right here. So for this top hole in your recovery point, that's gonna go through the radiator core support here. Grab the long black bolt, split washer, the thinner OD flat washer, and then one of these nuts sitting on a popsicle stick. And I like to bend my popsicle stick back just a hair. You just wanna cant it a little bit because this has to fit in right up next to the radiator. So we'll push the body mount bolt up out of the way, feed that guy through, and then we'll come around the other side and we'll show you what that looks like. And that bolt pushes through right next to the radiator right there. It's kind of hard to see. That's why we gave you this lollipop stick for the nut. Fit that right up in there. Push the head of that bolt in and grab a thread. This is a better idea what it looks like when you finally get it all pinned together. For the bottom hole right here, you're gonna want the machine thread bolt, split washer, large fender washer, and that is gonna thread right into that radiator core support on the bottom side. We wanna leave it nice and loose so that all the bolts can find their home. And then when everything is snug, then we'll tighten it all down with an 18 millimeter wrench or socket. Let's start with the bottom first. We left our body mount bolt loose so we can get in here. We'll get the two front recovery point bolts. Those are also 18s. All right, and it's the same four bolts on the other side. Get them tightened down and we'll zip this 17 back up. You're only gonna be able to tighten that nut if that bolt's pulled all the way down. So give it a little side pressure and don't push up on your socket. Now we'll button up this bumper support right here. So last two bolts you got in your hardware pack is going to be this guy here. Grab one of the larger fender washers, line it up, push it through the stack. We'll do a big fender washer on the back side, split washer and a nut. Get that tightened down and do the same thing on the other side. All right, you want to grab a 16 wrench and a 16 socket. And we'll get these guys tightened down. I like to push my bracket as high up as possible. Just keep that plastic tucked up out of the way. All right, time for skid plate. We're almost done. See that hardware right there? It's got the encapsulated uh, spring washer and flat washer on it. Grab three of them. Take your skid plate. And we will thread these guys up into the nut certs. We'll go here. And again, you're gonna to wanna to grab a number four Allen to tighten those things down, but we'll leave it a little loose because they're on slots. Now we're gonna grab, should have two of these smaller bolts left and some small fender washers. And there is a threaded hole right there in the cross member. And that'll spin in there. I think that's a 13. That's centered up there. 
And we'll zip those down. Man, that looks awesome. And now all we have to do is just hook up the positive and negative for our winch. And we'll pop our negative battery terminal back on. And we are good to go. Get that all locked down. I'll get this plastic shroud pinned back on and we're good to go. Bumpers on the truck, look that install was actually a lot easier than uh, you may have thought at first. Hopefully the uh, tips and tricks that we ran through are gonna help you. Like I love this smaller compact, like stealthy design in the, in the stubby bumper, but you don't lose any of these great features with your recovery points, full size winch, your light bar, crumple zones. It's just, uh, I love it. So if you wanna get one, if you don't have one already, or you have questions, go to ironman4x4america.com and we'll help you out over there.